because that's the way I am. I don't, I don't uh, open up uh, barbecue instructions to build a barbecue. I'm very bad that way. I just start doing it. That's what I did with Microsoft uh, front page and uh, started building a site. Started building sites. I published a science and nature site, resource site, website called Great Blue Marble. It won several awards. Uh, it was designed for teachers and students. Uh, the creati creativity I was expressing felt very, very good. But the site did not generate strong revenue. But I learned how to build websites and now had a unique venue to release my writings. Then in about uh, shortly thereafter, um, I began having pains in my feet in 2000. I went to my doctor. He said, you I always see you in sandals. And uh, perhaps that's what it is. Um, I'm going to refer you to a podiatrist. Then the fall of 2000, uh, I woke up and I was uh, virtually paralyzed. I was unable to move. Uh, I was weak, feeble. Um, I knew this was bad. I thought it was very bad. Um, I was uh, literally paralyzed, couldn't move. I had to have my son and my wife take me into the car and uh, take me to the hospital. And um, it was a strange experience for me because I've always thought of myself as very healthy. But um, that day I thought I was going to die. My wife and my son held me to the car to the hospital. It was a beautiful morning. I remember it uh, vividly. Um, I, I was in shock. The more I was, I drove to the hospital, I was in complete shock, bitter. Um, you know, the question, why me? Why is this happening to me? But there was this peace and contentment that I also had that played against that. And I've never felt quite that peace and contentment since, even though I, I knew I was dying or felt like I was dying. And I felt very sad about worrying being left alone, let alone the kids. We had been married at that time close to 30 years, 25 years. I was diagnosed with acute rheumatoid arthritis. It had gone unchecked. I was told that I had a foot problem and see a podiatrist. Um, it went unchecked and undiagnosed, my, my condition became severe and life-threatening. Um, I was blessed to come into the care of uh, a gentleman called Dr. Atkinson, who was known as Canada's best rheumatoid arthritis specialist happened to work at the University of Calgary and happened to be still there three months before his retirement. Um, uh, he fixed me. I take pills every day for the, and I will for the rest of my life. Um, he told me my life would be shortened and I will take the daily medication for life, but I was so thankful. Um, later in 2000, um, my father had a heart valve operation that didn't go particularly well, but was still alive. And then uh, now I'm moving on to 2001. 2000 was a tough year. So was 2001. Chapter three is called Prelude to Terror. Um, 2001 for me was a time of reflection urge to find more clues, get my answer to 11.11, and some of these other things, AN, was, was just daily, just dominated my thoughts. I needed answers. Um, I, I, it made me think that maybe I had all the answers and they were just hidden in my research. It made me think maybe I should go back through those boxes, maybe I should go back through my 4,000 books and I missed clues. Maybe it's the wrong time. If I did feel there was some divine uh, help on this, maybe they weren't giving me the divine help because it was the wrong time. And then I, I said, it's time for a reality check. Where do I go from here? What am I doing? Where was I? Where was I going? I was a very confused little puppy. And I was broke. I had a big, beautiful home in Diamond Cove, worth a lot of money, a couple brand new vehicles, lots of stuff. Went to Hawaii once or twice a year. But uh, this research had taken uh, all my time, all my resources, and all my money. And my family, thank God, stuck with me through that. But now I'm broke. And even if I want to continue my research, I'm broke. I'm just, there's no way to go, nowhere to go. I needed an income, and my research and my writing would cease here for the time being. 
I went on a job search. Uh, I've been out of the film business for five years. For those of you who are, or I didn't share some of the things at the beginning, I used to be president, being built, president CEO of a film studio. I did that for about uh, 12, 14 years. Um, I've been out of that film business for five years. There were opportunities in Toronto, New York, Los Angeles. Maureen had recently been in New York. We'd all been to, to LA and Toronto before. Uh, she toured the Empire State Building. And the more we looked at these places like Toronto, New York, LA, we decided that we wanted to stay in Calgary with the family. Um, unbelievable offer from one studio in, in, uh, called Hanna Barbera to move to either LA or London. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we turned it down. Kids were more important. Uh, spring of 2001, I uh, worked on a marketing project with my brother. My brother is the president and CEO of Canada Tourism. I traveled to him, uh, with, uh, traveled to Ottawa, then I joined him and went to Washington, D.C. in spring 2001 to assist him with some marketing that we, they were co-venturing with for uh, um, U.S. tourism and Canada tourism. Summer of 2001 um, uh, is when we actually traveled to Washington, D.C. We traveled to Ottawa and Washington later, but in summer of 2001 I was in Washington. I believe it was July, it could have been August. Um, I have been all over the world, literally. I, hello, did you want to come in? Grab a seat, it's okay. Uh, so my brother and I flew down to, uh, to uh, Washington. Um, I remember those, the, those were, the, was, were those the days that I was in pain from those pills from there. Hello, come on in. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and listen, one of the things that amazed me when I was in Washington, and I had been all over the world because of the film business and, and some of the other travels I did, I've been to uh, um, every continent, but uh, Australia and Antarctica. And um, what amazed me when I was in Washington, it's easy to see the pictures of the White House or the picture of the obelisk uh, or the Lincoln Memorial or, or the Senate building or the Capitol building. But when you're there, you, and I don't know if any of you have been in Washington, but you have this feeling you're not really in a North American city. And while I was walking around uh, Washington and seeing Corinthian pillars and Doric pillars and all of these marble and stone. I had a deja vu feeling when I was in Rome. I was in Rome in 1973, and it made me feel like I was from, from an ancient civilization to a modern civilization, but they looked the same, except the buildings were desecrated in one place, and the buildings were nice and smooth and shiny in the other place. It was a strange feeling, but I had that feeling. Um, I had dinner on the Potomac that night uh, with my brother. Uh, we could clearly see the Pentagon uh, from the Potomac. Uh, the sun was going down, it was darkening the sunset. You could hear the helicopters um, uh, coming from the Pentagon. They, were, they seemed invisible, but you could hear them. They, they apparently flew with no lights um, to avoid missiles and other things. And I left Washington feeling that I'd been to the core of the mightiest nation on Earth. I felt the ancient world and I could see the modern world. It was a very, very bizarre experience uh, in Washington uh, that uh, summer and fall. September 10th, 2001, uh, I'm now back in Calgary. Uh, my father was operated on for an aneurysm. There were complications with that. My son had severe pains in his side and I began building um, a site called Divine Pattern because it already decided 